very much, and thanks everybody to come. Uh, thanks to everybody for coming to the last session. Really, uh, so this is joint work with my colleagues Joe Bates and Paul Clow um, at the Information School at, uh, at the University of Sheffield in the UK. I myself am from am from the Open University, not in the UK, but actually in Cyprus. So as you can see from the title, our work concerns a very specific type of search engine bias, the perpetuation of gender-based stereotypes in image search result sets. So gender bias in image search is not a new concern for our community. And in particular, two years ago at CHI 2015, Matthew Kay, Cynthia Matuzek, and Sean Munson had a really nice paper in which they examined the problem in the context of the professions. So in their experiments with uh, the Google search uh, engine, they found evidence of a slight but systematic stereotype exaggeration, such that searches on male-dominated careers have more images of men than would be expected, and vice versa for women-dominated careers. Uh, so I'm showing you here an example from the uh, Bing image search engine, which is the one that we're using in our study. And as you can see, we've searched for images of nurses, and we can see that in the first 50 top-ranking images uh, returned by Bing that we see lots of women and only four images of men. And actually, male nurse is suggested to us as a search term, so let's see those results. Uh, okay, in the result set for male nurse, we can see some support for another finding described by Kay and colleagues. Um, in particular, they found that there are also qualitative differences in the way that uh, men and women are represented in images, and in particular, gender stereotype incongruent images, in other words here, uh, images of um, men who are nurses, are less likely to be professional looking, and they're more likely to be inappropriate looking. In other words, there is a backlash effect for stereotype disconfirming people in images. So we were really inspired by this work, but we wanted to extend it in two important ways. So first, there are actually many dimensions upon which we stereotype, um, and one of those is personality traits. So here you can see the top Bing uh, results for the search query intelligent person, and as you can see, even in the top uh, 50 results, we don't even see a single image depicting uh, a woman that's chosen to represent this trait. Now, uh, in contrast, in a search for images depicting a shy person, Bing returns primarily images of women. <clears throat> so the second way in which we wanted to extend the previous work on gender uh, bias and image search results is to experiment with ways to automatically analyze the gender distribution in result sets. Uh, so as researchers, we are skeptical that neutral search algorithms exist. In other words, we believe that search algorithms are always somehow biased. So to this end, our position is uh, that some automated means of analyzing result sets are necessary in order to raise awareness of possible biases, both amongst search users, search engine users, but also um, for third-party developers that use uh, Bing or Google's APIs in the applications that they build. So the theoretical background for our work comes from social psychology, and just as personality researchers have identified a big five, those who, those who study person perception speak of a big two. They believe that our perceptions of others are based uh, primarily on two dimensions, which are called uh, agency uh, or competence and warmth or communality. So the first one, agency or competence, has to do with whether or not we perceive someone as being capable of achieving his or her own goals. And in contrast, the warmth dimension really has to do with the extent to which we find someone to be a threat to us. So it's whether or not we think someone has pro-social intentions toward us. Okay, so what does this have to do with stereotyping? Uh, essentially, psychologists believe that stereotypes are captured by combinations of the two dimensions. So uh, in the case of conventional gender stereotypes, we have that uh, women are believed to be and are expected to be rather low in agency or low, uh, low in competence and rather high in warmth, and uh, while the reverse is true of men. Men are seen as being and are expected to be high in agency and low in warmth. So how does one measure the content and strength of a given social stereotype? Uh, social psychologists have developed a method which has been used for decades in experimental settings, the trait adjective checklist method. Um, 
The method became well known through the uh, Princeton Trilogy studies uh, in which uh, they were trying to gauge the prevalent ethnic and racial stereotypes amongst college students. Um, researchers asked participants to describe the target social group or groups using a predefined list of trait adjectives and they can then study which traits are systematically associated to which groups and also the degree of consensus between their participants. Now, the, um, which list of traits to use has, of course, been the subject of much debate. However, Abel and colleagues have developed a standardized oper operationalization of the big two dimensions, and they've derived a set of adjectives that do not differ with respect to their frequency of occurrence across languages. So in our experiments, we use their 68 traits. And what we do is, um, we administer a trait adjective test to the Bing image search engine in the following way. We, take, uh, we form a query for each trait, which is composed of the adjective plus the word person, and we submit the query to Bing, and we collect the top 1,000 images that are returned to us. Now, the Bing API also has a parameter for which search market we want to use. So we retrieve images for four large <laughs> Anglophone markets, uh, the UK, the US, India, and South Africa. Uh, we addressed three research questions in our paper. Uh, first, we studied the baseline query person. So unlike in previous work that considered uh, professions where labor statistics could be used as a baseline, there's really no obvious baseline to which we can uh, compare the gender distribution of images retrieved on traits like caring or intelligent. So uh, essentially we ask, according to Bing, who represents a person? Then our second research question considers the content and strength of gender stereotypes based on the big two dimensions. Here we ask which traits are most often associated with which genders. And we also study the degree of consensus or overlap between the four uh, regional search markets that I mentioned. We also address a third question, which has to do with how stereotype incongruent individuals, in other words, warm men and competent women, are portrayed in the search results. Uh, however, I won't have time to cover those results in the talk today. <clears throat> okay, so to um, address our research questions, we need to be able to analyze a very large number of photos for the gender of the depicted people. This slide depicts uh, one significant challenge for automating this process. As you can see, we retrieve many different types of images. So as, uh, as shown, the images retrieved might be photographs of people, on which we would expect gender recognition to be relatively easier, uh, but we also retrieve cartoons or sketches and also images that just have quotes and don't depict any people at all. So this begs the initial question, well, how difficult is this task for humans? To this end, we conducted a pilot study on Crowdflower using the 1,000 images retrieved on the baseline query person from the Bing UK search market. Uh, we asked three independent annotators to answer two questions about each image. So the first we asked them, is the image a photograph, a sketch or an illustration, or some other type of image? And secondly, we asked them, does the image depict only women or girls, only men or boys, a mixed gender group of persons, gender ambiguous persons, or no one at all? So here we can see that most images retrieved for the person query were either photographs or sketches. And we can also see that there was a high degree of agreement between the annotators with respect to whether an image was a photo or a sketch. And here we can analyze the agreement between annotators with respect to the gender classification task. Most of the photos retrieved for the query person do in fact depict people, and there's a high level of agreement between annotators as to the genders of the depicted persons. But we can also observe here that in sketches, annotators most often cannot infer a gender for the people depicted. So for instance, in our data set, we had a lot of images of uh, stick figures or clay figures, which didn't have enough detail to suggest a gender. So based on the pilot, we decided to focus on inferring gender of people depicted in photographic images retrieved by Bing. Okay, to do this, we rely on the Clarify API, which is a proprietary service for general image recognition. 
We did experiment with other image processing tools that are specific to facial detection or recognition, such as Face++ or Betaface, but we found that we didn't get good enough coverage because they usually have specific requirements as to how the person in the image is positioned. So using Clarify, we were able to process 95% of the images that we retrieved from Bing, so that's good coverage. Um, what Clarify outputs is a set of textual con concept tags which describe the content of the image. We then post-process these tags looking, using Luke, the linguistic inquiry and word count tool. So in particular, we rely on Luke's dictionaries for female and male references. And if the image's tags contain female references but no male references, we label the image as depicting only women, and girl, women or girls uh, and vice versa. <clears throat> so here's a visual representation of our entire pipeline. So we collect images for 69 queries altogether for each of the four search markets. So that's the baseline query person plus the 68 traits. And then we gather the top 1,000 images per query. We then submit each image to Clarify, which returns the set of concept tags. Clarify has a tag called portrait, and we're able to use this tag to flag the images that are photo photographs. We then identify the genders of depicted individuals by post-processing the Clarify tags with Luke. So in the example image that you see on the slide, we can see that portrait is among the tags, so we would uh, flag this image as a photograph. And we also have the tags man and guy, which would be flagged by the male uh, reference dictionary uh, of Luke. And we don't have any female references, so this would be classified as um, depicting one or more men or boys. Okay, so how well do we do? Uh, we evaluated the performance on the 1,000 manually labeled images that we had. First, in terms of recognizing which images are photographs, we can see that we have very high precision and a recall of 0.75. What this means is that we, miss, we do miss some photos picked up by the human annotators, but the good thing is that we're not introducing many false positives. Uh, in the bottom three rows of the table, you can see the performance for the gender classification task. Here, too, we can see that the method has much better precision than recall, which again means that although we're missing some photos of both women and men, we're not introducing many false uh, positives. And we can also see that it misses only slightly more images of women as compared to men. Okay, finally we can move on to answering the questions. So let's consider the gender distribution in photographs retrieved on the query person. Uh, here in the slide, I'm breaking down the results um, both by region as well as ranking. So we have the top X results from the first 100 images retrieved to all 1,000. And within each ranking category, we found no statistically significant differences between regions in terms of the gender distributions. In all photos retrieved for each region, so all 1,000 uh, all the photos within the 1,000 images, about 42 of those depict men, 18% depict women, and 40% depict others. So in a nutshell, we can say that users are much more likely to retrieve a photo of a man as compared to a woman when they're searching for an image of a person. But in the sets of images that users are, more, are, are most likely uh, to access, in other words, the top 100 ranking images, there's a much greater gender imbalance. So here, around 61% of person photos depicted men, and only around 11 depict women. Okay, moving on to the second research question. Here we examine the gendering of traits using k-means clustering, and the input for each trait consisted of the proportion of photos retrieved that depicted women, men, and others. The figure that I show you here in the slide is for the UK data, and the green cluster consists of traits that are most often portrayed through images of women. The blue cluster of traits are those that have the greatest proportion of photos of men in the result sets. <clears throat> and the red cluster of traits are those that are often portrayed by images depicting various genders, so we call this our gender neutral cluster. Obviously, the traits that are furthest from the center are the ones that are most gendered in the sense that they have the most polarized result sets. So for example, we have traits such as intelligent, competent, and rational being masculinized, whereas traits such as sensitive and warm are feminized. So in summary, the stereotype of women is warm, and men as competent is largely reflected in the image search result sets. The cluster analysis also revealed that the manner in which Bing portrays traits across the regions is quite consistent. 
So there are 41 traits out of the 68, which, which the, for which the clustering result is the same. Uh, you can see them here on the slide. Uh, so there are a couple of points I'd like to make here. One is that we observe both negative and positive traits in the masculine and feminine clusters, which could describe uh, not only what women and men should be, but also what they shouldn't or aren't expected to be. And in the gender neutral cluster, it's interesting to note that while we do observe some warm traits, such as caring or affectionate, that these are generally positive traits. And actually, social psychologists who study masculine norms and stereotypes have differentiated between high and low status warm traits. Here, 12 of the 13 gender, gender neutral traits are high status in the sense that they are beneficial in terms of achieving one's goals. Okay, uh, ending with a few thoughts for you. So lately there has been a lot of discussion surrounding algorithmic transparency, with the ACM even coming out with a position statement uh, back in January. In this work, by no means have we shown that the Bing algorithm itself is gender biased. And certainly our current methodology cannot be used to reveal exactly where the biases originate in the engineering process. That said, we do find pretty concrete evidence that Bing image search that Bing image results perpetuate gendered perceptions of personhood, and so we should really ask ourselves if we're okay with that, particularly given the power that search has in, in mediating our view of the, social, of the social world. In future work, we'd like to improve this. Uh, that includes moving beyond our simplistic binary treatment of gender, and also better understanding which images are the most uh, difficult ones to analyze. And we hope to use this approach for raising awareness of biases in search results, both amongst end users as well as app developers who use the Bing API, which could hopefully encourage them to reject uncritical reproductions of um, social stereotypes. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Jana. Do we have any questions in the audience? Oh, oh, geez. Oh, come up to the microphone. Thank you for that really interesting talk. I apologize if I missed something because I snuck in just a little late. Um, I was wondering what your opinion was on how reflective this is of just how humans operate as opposed to some kind of systematic bias in the system. Right. Yeah, we were actually just having this conversation before the session started. So, um, yeah, there's the question of, well, are, are stereotypes, I mean, is that is that just human nature? Uh, can we even do something about it? Should we do something about it? Um, so let me just, I, I, I want to pose a sort of philosophical question, like, to what extent is technology such as this that's really powerful supposed uh -huh. to ex extend ourselves or elevate ourselves? And I don't claim to know which it should be. Okay, I'm not <laughs> sure if I totally understood your question, but I mean, I guess my position is that, um, like I mentioned in the, in the last slide, I don't know how to detect where the biases are coming from, and um, I just want people to be aware of what's, what's in the image. I don't, I don't think that it's something we can correct. Um, the biases are, are probably coming from the underlying training data, the metadata that's on there, just the overall nature of the web, the content that's on there. I don't know if I yeah. answered your question. Thank you. Thank you.